Banksy is the best known graffiti artist, possibly of all time, but nobody knows who he is. But since he came to prominence in the 2000s, multiple theories have emerged about who he might be. While some contend that he's an ordinary British guy who values his privacy, another theory suggests that we already know who Banksy is, and he's a famous musician. In 1983, the New York rap group Rocksteady Crew toured Europe and introduced the continent to a brand new cultural movement known as hip hop. They appeared on British TV as part of the Royal Variety performance and performed alongside several graffiti artists. These spray painters inspired a generation of Brits to pursue what some considered a brand new art form and what others considered vandalism. Graffiti was particularly prominent in London, but eventually moved to smaller cities. Banksy was a part of a group known as the Dry Breads Crew that regularly tagged walls all across his home city of Bristol. During this time, Banksy met a photographer called Steve Lazarides who regularly took photos of his work. Steve eventually sold Banksy's work and became his agent. Banksy's graffiti work was technically illegal, however, with Steve, Banksy had a middleman who could verify and promote his artwork, but also protect his identity. And this has been Banksy's working model ever since, allegedly speaking. His artwork branched out from Bristol to London and is now present across every continent in the world. Throughout the 2000s, Banksy's anonymity only attracted more and more attention to his artwork. The fact that nobody knew who he was created a mysticism and lore surrounding him, as well as a number of popular theories of who he is. In 2010, a rumor circulated that Banksy was not a single artist, but a group of artists. This was sparked by a strange coincidence where Banksy murals kept popping up wherever a certain music group played on tour. The rumor suggested that Banksy was a group of fans of the Bristol music group Massive Attack. Massive Attack were also hugely inspired by the emerging hip-hop culture in the late 80s, but more so, the music. The group are seen as the early pioneers of trip-hop music, which takes the hip-hop technique of sampling to make very ambient and laid-back electronic music. In 2010, several Banksy artworks were spotted around San Francisco. This was reported to the press in May, and Massive Attack performed in this area from April 25th to the 27th. Between May 7th and May 9th, Massive Attack played Toronto, and on May 9th, three new Banksy murals appeared in the city. On May 12th, a mural appeared in Boston, and Massive Attack performed in the city a day later. And this coincidence goes back even further. In 2003, Banksy's artwork appeared in Melbourne, Australia. The same time Massive Attack appeared in the Vodafone Arena. In 2006, Massive Attack were on a US tour where they played in Berkeley, California on September 22nd and the Hollywood Bowl in LA on the 24th. This was coincidentally the week after Banksy held his barely legal exhibition in Los Angeles. So people who went to Massive Attack concerts seemed to be in the same spot where Banksy artworks kept popping up. In his book, Banksy wrote that he's a fan of Massive Attack, specifically Robert Del Naya, who goes by the name 3D. Before Massive Attack blew up, Del Naya was one of Bristol's biggest known graffiti artists. Banksy wrote in his book, When I was about 10 years old, a kid called 3D was painting the streets hard. 3D quit painting and formed the band Massive Attack, which may have been a good thing for him, but was a big loss for the city. Del Naya didn't give up art entirely and worked on the cover of Massive Attack's records. However, the British journalist Craig Williams argued that Robert Del Naya's artwork extends far beyond his band's album covers. He claims that Robert and Banksy are the same person, and this explains why Banksy murals kept cropping up after Massive Attack concerts. As he looked into it, Williams discovered even more coincidences. As his name suggests, Robert has Italian heritage and his father is from Naples. Robert has even been on Italian radio talking about how he's a big fan of the city's soccer team, Napoli, and regularly attends their games. And this is where a Banksy mural cropped up that is particularly suspicious. Del Naya attended a game on September 26, 2004. And this was around the time that a Banksy mural appeared in Naples. The problem with a lot of these coincidences is that they're popular tourist destinations. And two British guys being in Napoli or LA at the same time isn't that big of a coincidence. Williams looked into the more obscure locations that Banksy worked in to see if his theory still held up. The city of Malaco in Mali is the most obscure place where Banksy's artwork appeared. Del Naya has appeared on the Voices United for Mali Song of Peace, which was a charity single consisting of a mixture of Malian and British musicians. However, this song was released in 2013, and Banksy's mural appeared in 2007. Ultimately, there was nothing conclusive that could really join the dots between Robert and Banksy. After Craig Williams wrote about this theory, news organizations asked Del Naya for a comment. He wrote, Rumors of my secret identity are greatly exaggerated. It would be a good story, but sadly not true. Wishful thinking, I think. He is a mate as well. He's been to some of the gigs. It's purely a matter of logistics and coincidence. Nothing more than that. Interestingly, he also spoke about it at a gig and said, Rumors of me being Banksy are greatly exaggerated. We are all Banksy. But in 2017, another clue popped up out of nowhere. 
The English DJ and drum and bass producer Goldie appeared on the Distraction Pieces podcast. The conversation turned to the commercialization of graffiti, and Goldie randomly said, For something like graffiti, which has inspired the world with font, or anything to do with anyone wearing a baseball cap and sneakers, at its center it's still misunderstood. But give me a bubble letter and put it on a t-shirt and write Banksy on it and we're sorted. We can sell it now. No disrespect to Rob, I think he's a brilliant artist. I think he's flipped the world of art over. Goldie let it slip that Banksy's name was Rob. As you can imagine, this reignited the theory that Banksy's Robert Del Naya. However, it also reignited yet another theory. Rob is short for Robert, but Rob can also be short for Robin. In 2008, the British newspaper The Mail on Sunday revealed that they knew who Banksy was. Their first clue was a picture of an English guy in Jamaica at around 2004 who was carrying a can of spray paint. This picture is believed to be Banksy. A journalist from the newspaper traveled to Bristol and spoke to someone who knew who the real-life Banksy was. The journalist was told that the person in this picture was Robin Gunningham, who was just an ordinary guy from Bristol. The paper spoke to a former classmate who said, He was one of three people in my year who were extremely talented at art. He did lots of illustrations. I'm not at all surprised if he's Banksy. Then they spoke to a neighbor from his childhood who said, The family was always very nice. I didn't know for sure, but I think Robin was working as a graffiti artist. He worked for other people and would disappear for months on end. He was quite nomadic. I would not go as far as to say he went off the rails, but there was some sort of rift in the family, probably because he didn't turn out quite as they hoped. He just disappeared after he left home. The most promising piece of evidence came from investigating a guy called Luke Egan. Egan was also a graffiti artist and exhibited his work alongside Banksy at a London exhibition called Santa's Ghetto in Christmas of 2001. According to electoral voting records, Egan was living in a home in 1998 with a man named Robin Gunningham. The Mail on Sunday spoke to the owner of this house, who said, I brought the house that he used to live in. He had rented out a room, but I think there had been problems with the tenants and the landlord had to sort of repossess it or whatever. So he was just selling it. When I moved in, the place had been covered in graffiti and stuff like that. I threw things in the bin. This person had possibly thrown away some very valuable art. At that point, Banksy was just someone putting up stuff around Bristol. He was just another artist who had graffitied around Bristol. It keeps me awake at night sometimes thinking about it. Banksy's and Robin Gunningham's lives moved in parallel. They both lived in the area of Easton and Bristol in the late 90s. They both moved from Bristol to London at around the same time too, and Banksy's 2003 exhibition Turf War was held in a warehouse just yards from Robin Gunningham's apartment. While this seemed to be very compelling evidence, the story came with a caveat. The article ends with, Given Banksy's long-standing success at covering his tracks, there is, of course, the possibility that the trail we have been following is a red herring, a complex setup. But if it is, it must be the most elaborate such ruse ever concocted. And if it is, where is Robin Gunningham? To complicate things even further, Banksy initially went under the alias Robbie Banks during his early career. Another Banksy suspect is the artist Damien Hurst, who is also from Bristol and matches the age range required to be Banksy. However, a theory suggests that he's not a graffiti artist, but he secretly funds Banksy. Bettina Prentice, founder and owner of Prentice Art Communications, told the Daily Beast, There are rumors that Hearst finances Banksy, who is in turn constantly highlighting the importance of Hearst by defacing or referencing his work, and he doesn't reference a lot of other arts. Other contenders are Jamie Hewlett, who is the comic artist behind the band Gorillaz. A forensic expert claims to have looked into this and maintained this theory even after Banksy's publicist told him it's not him. Publicist for Banksy, Joanna Brooks, told the Metro newspaper, I can confirm that Jamie Hewlett is not the artist Banksy. This expert responded, It's Jamie Hewlett, not Hewlett. Hewlett, not Hewlett. Not sure if that's them being technical. Other more out there theories claim that it's Neil Buchanan, a kid's TV presenter who hosted a TV show called Art Attack in the 90s. This theory was merely seen as a joke, but Buchanan did have to officially state on his website that he isn't Banksy. The contenders of who Banksy might be is not limited to celebrities, and any middle-aged man from Bristol with any interest in art will arouse suspicion. Billy Gannon, who worked as a counselor in a town in an area near Bristol, had to leave his job in 2022 because he was fed up with people thinking he was Banksy. He told The Guardian, The problem I have is that when I say to people I'm not Banksy, I can see this look in their eyes, and they say, that's what Banksy would say. Every time I deny I'm Banksy, a significant number of people in the town decide that I am, or could possibly be, Banksy. Make sure to subscribe for more.